What happens when you combined American Gods, Monty Python, a series of unfortunate events, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, a touch of Harry Potter and The Omen? Well, y you get a horrible mess. I mean, what did you expect when you just mutch all those things together? But what happens when you mix Terry Pratchett and Neil Gaiman? Well, you either get a weird Frankenstein's monster of a person, or you get good omens. Lucky for us, we got good omens. Yes, Gaiman and Pratchett's bizarre tale about good, evil and weird Scottish fellas obsessed with nipples finally gets its adaptation on Amazon Prime. And since we enjoyed it so much, we're diving into this weird world to find 10 interesting facts about the show that you may not have known. So if you had questions like what connections and easter eggs does this show have with Doctor Who, besides the obvious, what cheeky cameo appears in the show that you may have missed? And I can't think of anything funny to write here, says the script. So include this instead. <laughs> yeah, there you go. That's about as good as a written joke, right? Oh, such hacks. We did this last episode. Anyway, we've got the answers for you. I think. Number one. So Good Omens is based off the 1990 novel written by Terry Pratchett and Neil Gaiman. The book's original title is called Good Omens, The Nice and Accurate Prophecies of Angus Nutter, which the book is a comedy tale about the birth of the son of Satan and the coming apocalypse or end times. A sequel to the book was planned called 668 The Neighbor of the Beast, but after Gaiman had moved from the UK to the US, Pratchett expressed doubt that a sequel would be written. After Pratchett's death, Gaiman stated that he and Pratchett had plotted out some of the sequel, and that the sequel would feature a lot more angels, including the angel Gabriel, who was mentioned briefly in the first novel, but would feature much more prominently in the TV adaptation. Number 2 a film based on the novel was set to be made and directed by Terry Gilliam. A script had been created for the film, but the film itself struggled to get any financial support, even up until 2008. But Gilliam still remained hopeful that the project would eventually go ahead, especially with the success of both Stardust and the then upcoming film Coraline, both being adaptations of Neil Gaiman's work. Eventually in 2011 an announcement was made that a TV series adaptation would go ahead but in 2016 Gaiman announced that he was writing the script for a six part television series as a result of a request from Pratchett made shortly before his death. Oh, it's number three. The TV series, however, is not the only adaptation of Good Omens. In 2014, BBC Radio 4 produced a radio adaptation, uh, because they still exist apparently, and starred Mark Heap and Peter Serafinowicz. It's four in the fucking morning! Neil Gaiman and Terry Pratchett had cameo roles as a pair of traffic cops called Neil and Terry. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's number four. So the Time Lord that is David Tennant stars in this show and is of course famous for playing the Doctor in Doctor Who. But that is not where the Doctor Who connections end, as throughout the series there are numerous references and easter eggs to Doctor Who, including Michael Sheen himself who played a voice only role in one episode, Jack Whitehall's character is seen wearing a scarf with a pattern that resembles the pattern on Tom Baker's scarf from the fourth Doctor, a picture of a planet and a title which reads Gallifrey, the home planet of the Time Lords, is seen briefly floating past as David Tennant searches for a new planet to escape to in order to avoid the coming apocalypse, and those real hardcore Who fans will have noticed the license plate that read Sidrat, which is a reference to the evil TARDISes used by the Warlords. But wait, there's more! Oh. I got five on it. Oh, copyright strike. One of the friends of Adam Young says exterminate in episode four, a reference to the catchphrase used by the Doctor's classic foe, the Daleks. And many more actors in the show have appeared in Doctor Who at one time or another, including Derek Jacobi, who played the master briefly, Daniel Mays, Bill Patterson, Elizabeth Burton, Nina Sosanya, probably saying that one wrong, David Morrissey, Reese Shearsmith, Steve Pemberton, and Mark Gatiss, who both played a role in Doctor Who and wrote several episodes. You know what, this there's probably a ton more actors in this show that were in Doctor Who, but everybody was in Doctor Who, for Christ's sake. Your nan was in Doctor Who. She was. I saw her, she played a Dalek. It's number six. The demon Crowley takes his name from the English occultist Alistair Crowley, born in 1875 and died in 1947. Crowley called himself the most evil man alive and took part in rituals to try and produce the Antichrist, who he named Moonchild. Basically, he was a nutter, really. No, not that a nutter. 
Number seven, baby. Number seven. In the second to last episode, an American soldier is seen reading a book. This happens to be none other than Neil Gaiman's American Gods novel. You wanna know a secret? It's number eight. For those of you who have a knack for spotting voices, or just a keen eye for spotting names in the opening credits, you'll know that the narrator or voice of God is played by Francis McDormand, and the voice of Satan is played by Benedict Cumberbatch. Yeah, that's right, get the British guy to play the root of all evil. Ugh, we're always the bad guys. Benedict Cumberbatch was famously Sherlock in the TV show Sherlock, written by writers Stephen Moffat and Mark Gatiss, who also played a role of Mycroft in the show and has a bit part in this show, Good Omens. Drawing even more connections to Sherlock, Benedict Cumberbatch, Mark Gatiss and Sean Brooke all played the home siblings with Cumberbatch as Sherlock, Gatiss as Mycroft and Brooke as Eurus, and all three of them appear in this show. Good heavens, number nine. Good Omens marks the seventh live action adaptation of Neil Gaiman's work. Others include Stardust, Coraline, How to Talk to Girls at Parties, American Gods, Lucifer, and Neil Gaiman's Likely Stories. I say, old chap, it's number 10. Speaking of Neil Gaiman, he himself has a cameo in this series. If you keep your eyes peeled, you'll be able to spot him in episode 4 as all the individuals in the cinema besides David Tennant, and even the spirit of Terry Pratchett makes an appearance as his iconic hat and scarf appear in Michael Sheen's bookshop. Well there you go, 10 facts about good omens. So let me know down in the comments what you thought of this bizarre mini-series. I'm really interested to see what people's thoughts are on this one. And if you'd like to support the channel and help it grow so we can make more shows and bigger and better content, then please do consider subscribing or liking the video or even sharing it. Any and all of those things really do help us out a lot. And we've got a bunch of exciting things lined up for this channel, so if you don't want to miss any of it, make sure you hit that bell thing so you get notified. But thanks for watching, guys.